Hi, my name is Oliver and in this video I'll teach you how to animate a sunglass shine in After Effects. So to get started I've illustrated these simple sunglasses. We have a few layers so let's quickly go through them. If we start from the back you can see we have the sort of temple, the arm here, the right one. Then we have the left one, they're sort of crossing. We have the glass itself, it's tinted and, and then it's transparent so we can actually see the temples behind it. Then we have the front of the frame here and we just have sort of a highlight shown as a stroke. Now this highlight is a bit extreme, of course it wouldn't be highlighted all the way around but we're going to animate that so don't worry. Now if you want to support the channel you can go down in the description and download the project file so you can use my illustration to create the animation or just take a deeper look at the sort of keyframing part. So to get started we'll sort of create this fake 3D rotation of the glasses from left to right because of course there wouldn't really be any sort of reflection if the glasses weren't rotating. Now what we want to start out by doing is actually add some scale animation to the frame. Now before we do that we have to make sure that everything else is parented to the frame because that way if I press S on the frame, turn off constraint proportions, you can see that everything follows. And the way we're going to do this is if we just zoom out a bit, you can see that the anchor point, we need that centered for this animation to work right. We want it to be scaled from the center. So we select the pan behind tool, select the anchor point, hold down command and control, and it should snap right to the center right around here. Then we go around one second ahead. Now this really depends on how quick you want the animation, but this is where we sort of want to add a keyframe for the scale. Now we can also press shift and P, Right click the position and separate the dimensions and just add a keyframe to the X position as well because we're also going to animate that. So now if we press U we can just see those two keyframes and we can go to the very start. Now we want to sort of rotate the, the sunglasses to the left and we can do this by scaling it down a bit. So you can see it already seems as if it's rotated. Right now if you look at it you're not quite sure if it's rotated to the left or rotated to the right. But that's something to do with the temples and we're going to animate them afterwards, so don't worry about that. Now this is to the left, so we might want to add just a bit of position keyframes to the left to just really emphasize that movement. And when we have done this, we can go ahead and do the same to the right. So if we go one second ahead here to two seconds, we can actually just copy and paste the same scale keyframe because it's the exact same scale. We just want to add a different position. So you can see right now, it seems like it's rotating back and forth. And of course, we'll add some easing later to make that more convincing. But we want this to loop. So therefore, we want it to go back to the center position. And then we want it to go back to the starting position. So go one second ahead. Then we copy those keyframes in the middle. So it's back to the sort of middle position. Then we copy the first keyframes and paste them at the end. And we're back to that starting position. So right now you can see that we just go back and forth and if you play it, it's really sharp right now and it looks weird because we haven't eased it yet. But we'll do that when we have animated everything. So let's take a look at the temples. We'll shift click on, on them so we can select both and we'll search for path because we are going to animate the paths of these temples. So we just want to add a keyframe here at one second because this is sort of the, the front view of the sunglasses. So add a keyframe to both paths here. Go to the start. So you have to imagine that the thing closest to us that will move to the left because it's turning to the left and the thing that's the furthest in the back that would be the temples will sort of move to the right. So therefore if we take this um, right temple then we can go ahead and select the path, select these two, hold down shift and just click two times to get that moving to the right. And then we can select the other path, these two, two times to make that turn to the right as well. So right now you can see we sort of get this fake rotation and this can be a bit too extreme. So you might just want to sort of tweak around with this and if you don't hold down shift, it won't move as much. So we can just, just try and tweak it. And let's say that we, we like this and we can move on. So we go to two seconds and now we just have to do the opposite so we select those paths again and, and right now I'm just doing the same. So I'm doing holding down shift and doing twice to the left and then I'm taking my finger off shift and doing four to the right. So 
It's just so we maintain these sort of sort of same values just for the opposite side. And right now you can see we have this fake 3D rotation. And again, we just want to copy those keyframes. So here we want to copy the center keyframe. And here's what's the end. We want to copy that first keyframe. So right now, if we play this back, you can actually see that we have this animation and we just need to add some easing to, to really get this to make any sense. So press Command and Control A and U to see all of the keyframes. Now we select them, press F9 to add some easy ease. And I think we should actually go through the exposition, then the scale and then the paths together because we can do some value graph for these two to make them perfect. And then we just do the speed graph with the paths. So start with the exposition. Right here, you can see that the curve should be smooth because we're looking at the value graph. And every time you see the value graph sort of go flat, that means that the animation stops. So we can just add some easing all around to these keyframes right here. And then when we have done that, we really just want to take these and sort of try and line them up. So, so they keep that sort of motion and it stays smooth. And we just sort of try and keep doing that. So right around here. So you can see right now, we already have a much smoother result just by really adjusting the X position. And this could actually work fine, but we can go ahead and adjust the other keyframes a bit. Now we just want to leave the scale easing as is, that looks great. And the last thing we're going to adjust is the paths. So if we select them here, we can just select both of them, go into the graph editor. And here you can see it's a totally different graph. And that's because it's the speed graph, even though it's saying it's the value graph, it's the speed graph because you can't adjust paths with the value graph because it doesn't really output any certain value. So therefore we're working with the speed graph. You can see that every time we get to this sort of point in the front, it goes down to zero in speed. And we wanted to maintain some of that speed. So we want to select that point. Now we can just turn off this transform box so we can actually see what we're doing. And we just want to drag it up so it's maintaining some speed here. So we'll drag it up here. And sometimes you can't really select both of them, but you just have to do it twice then. And then we'll go to the other point where this is happening. And we just try and do the exact same, try and sort of maintain that speed. And we just drag it up like this. And then at the other points, we just want to add a bit of easing because this is where it's sort of at the side points and this is where it can go all the way down to zero in speed. And we just drag those handles out a little bit like this and that should be fine. And now we can take a look at the animation. So you can see that the fake 3D turn works perfectly and now we can start to add the highlights. So we already have some highlights on the frame itself and those are the ones that we're going to work with first. So if we drag this down a bit, we can select these highlights and we can just zoom in. So you have to imagine that when the glasses move to the right, then the highlights will move to the left. That's just how it works. So if we go into the highlight, open it up and we find the stroke. Here we just want to add dashes. And right now you can't see it, but if we drag those dashes out, you can see they will have a load of dashes and we just want around three or four on the glasses. So right around here should be fine because then you can actually see when we start to move these around. So we can start here at the very start. And here you have to imagine that, that the light would be hitting from the left side. It would be sort of reflected on, on the right side of, of these sort of frames. So we can just try and offset this. So it's sort of in that side. You can see that we have them all on sort of the right side. Then we add a keyframe to the offset, go to two seconds because then it's at the other side. And we just want to animate the offset so the sort of highlight or reflection is on the left side now. And then we copy the first keyframe and just paste it at the end. You can select all of the keyframes and press F9 to ease them. And now if we play this back, you can see that that highlight sort of moves with the glasses. So that's quite easy. And now we just want to add the final highlight, the sort of highlight on the glass itself. And we can just very quickly draw that. Just select the pen tool, make sure the fill is set to white and there's no stroke enabled. And then we just simply create these boxes that have a sort of an angle to them and they don't have to be perfect or anything. I'm, I'm just going to create around 
two boxes for each side of the glasses and you can make them whatever size you'd like and you can adjust them later. And every time you draw a path, make sure to select the shape layer again. So you create a new path and we can just sort of try and draw something. And really this is up to taste. You can add as many as you'd like and you can create as many sizes as you'd like. So I'm just doing this rather quickly to really show you what's going on with this the shine. And you have to make sure it's just above the glass. And then we're going to the effects and presets and we search for the set matte effect. Drag that onto the shine. And here we just have to select the glass as the matte layer. And there you can see that it just sticks to the glass. So we take the shine, press T as in opacity, and then we can just turn the opacity down to maybe 25%. And you see we have this sort of reflection. So here it's the same principles. The, the sort of uh, shine would be on the right side when the glasses are turned to the left. So we just take the shine and we move it to the right, sort of like this. And then we press P as in position, add a keyframe, go to the very center of the animation. Then we drag it all the way to the other side. And really you can drag it as, as far as you'd like. And we can take a look at this afterwards to see how it looks and feels. Then we go to the end, copy and paste the first keyframe. And we just have to make sure that we ease everything. Then we can try and play it back. And now you can see we have this very cool shine effect. And, and this could work fine. You could stop at this. It's, it's a very flat sort of style. Uh, we added some 2.5D and this could work. But you can also take it a step further to make the sort of reflection a bit more interesting. Because right now it's just these two shapes and maybe you want something that, that looks a bit more interesting. Um, but it, re it really is up to preference and style. So to take it a step further, you'll go to the effects and presets and search for the turbulent displace. You'll take that and drag that onto the shine. Now you have to make sure that the set mat is below this because otherwise the effect will go outside of the borders that the set mat has created. So now we can adjust the settings. So you can see it adds a bit of displacement and you can really adjust this as you'd like and you can go crazy with it. So you can see this is quite subtle, but it adds a little bit of displacement and really the amount is how much displacement there is. And the size is sort of how big the displacement is. So if you create this at a very low, it will be very complex and very high. You can see that it will, yeah, at one point you can see the top part will actually come down here because the size of the displacement is so big, but you can play around with these settings. And if you really uh, increase the amount, you can see that it sort of distorts. So it creates these sort of gaps in the reflection and maybe that's a look that you really like. But, but again, try and play around with it and, and get something that you like. And you can also just turn it off and stay with the sort of flat regular look. But this is just an extra thing that I thought would be cool to add, just because then you have some different options for the, the style you're going for. So that's how you rather quickly create this sort of fake 3D rotation of the sunglasses with the shine on the on the frames and the glass itself. And I hope that you can, can take this shine and these effects and use them on all of your other work and really try and expand on, on your skills. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, comment down below and tell me if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. If you create anything from this, make sure to share it with me on Instagram at Oliver Randorf. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now, till next time.